Here today we're going to talk about accrual adjustments as they relate to the um, adjustment process. And before starting this um, clip, I hope that you have watched the background clip on adjusting entries. There's some good background uh, before you begin to watch this one on accrual adjustments. This is just a continuation of that clip. But again, today we're going to look at specifically accrual adjustments. Accrual adjustments are entries that have never been recorded on the books. But again, we get up to the end of the accounting period, <clears throat> the end of the year, before we close the books, we, we think about is there anything that we haven't recorded on the books that needs to be recorded. Now there's three specific types of accrual adjustments. There are accrued expenses. And those would be expenses that um, we've already consumed the product or service, but we haven't paid for it yet. We may even have the invoice, but we haven't paid for it yet. And then there's also um, revenue that may need to be accrued, that we may have delivered the product or provided the service for our customer. We, we haven't billed them yet, so it hasn't shown up on our books yet. And the third type that we'll spend a little bit of time talking about today is depreciation. And that is a, 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 an entry that would not involve cash. And depreciation is kind of a separate topic all to itself. <clears throat> so let's look at um, these three different types of adjustments. Something to remember about accrual adjustments is that they never involve cash. And they always use either a revenue or an expense account. The accrued expenses, as, as I mentioned earlier, are expenses that we have never paid. So maybe we find we have uh, find there's something we owe for and we haven't paid for it yet, but we consumed it or we used it up in the period um, that we're trying to determine our income before we close our books. Any accrued expenses to record them, we would debit an expense account, some sort of expense account, whatever it relates to, and credit a payable account because again, we still owe for it. Accrued revenue, again, would be any, if we provided a service or product to our customer that we had not collected for yet, maybe we had even sent a bill out to the customer so it's never uh, hit our books. And when we uh, have accrued revenue to record that, we would debit accounts receivable and credit the uh, revenue account, whatever revenue that goes with that. And then for depreciation, Depreciation is something that we will be taking on our fixed assets. Um, and fortunately, in this chapter, they always give us the dollar value uh, for depreciation. In a later chapter, we'll actually learn how to compute that number. But today, we'll just look at a number. But when we're recording depreciation on our books, we're actually just taking part of the cost of that fixed asset, fixed assets being things that we can see, feel, and touch that are going to last us for more than a year, so we're going to depreciate them. It's just a way of taking part of the cost of that asset and showing that it's expired or been used up during that period. Because as you know, all fixed assets will, will generally um, wear out and have to be replaced. So we're just showing that the value of that, some of it has been uh, going to be recorded in this accounting period. It doesn't necessarily have to do with the market value of the asset. We're just going to be, a, um, in, but when we um, record depreciation, we will be debiting depreciation expense. Uh, so we'll actually be affecting our net income for the period. Depreciation will reduce our net income. We'll be crediting, and this is a brand new type of account, accumulated depreciation, which is a contra asset account. A contra asset account is, um, it has the opposite balance as an asset and it, it's an offset. So accumulated depreciation would be taken against a particular type of fixed assets, equipment, building, furniture, those types of things, and um, it would offset the balance of that. So because it is a contra asset, we would credit uh, accumulated depreciation when we record uh, depreciation. Okay, so what we see here is the general journal, and I hope that you've downloaded the handouts that go with this section, um, because we will look at uh, we're going to look at some problems and figure out how we'd actually do the journal entries. 
Um, another reason that it will be great to have the uh, handouts with this section is that I'm going to refer to some of the information that was on the page that we just turned from uh, that showed the three different types of adjusting entries. And so you'll need to look at your handout uh, when we're picking, a, uh, picking from those three different categories. So let's look at the first problem here. One of the things to remember when you're entering um, information in the journal for adjusting entries, they will always be dated on the last day of the period. This is something you do before you close your books. So it's going to be the 31st or the 30th of some month, whatever, you know, whatever period it is that you're trying to close. You actually might be a week or two into the next month before you get, um, before you get the books closed, but you're always going to date it on the last of the month. And what I noticed about these problems, um, and they are similar to the ones um, in the book, is that they don't give you a date. So if you're looking at the general journal and you think, well, the first thing I'm supposed to do is put down the date. If they don't give you a date, then I'm just not going to use a date. But you would, in real, the real world, you would have to use a date. Okay, the problem says at the end of the period, the ABC company had performed services and earned $13,090 in fees that they had not billed their clients. So the first question that I would ask when I'm reading this is, what type of adjustment is it? Now you know because you're watching the section on accruals that it's some sort of accrual adjustment. Is it accrued revenue, it is accrued expense, or is it a depreciation adjustment? Well, going back and reading it, it says that we performed services and we had earned. Well, that doesn't sound like an expense, does it? That sounds like revenue. We've earned revenue and we haven't billed our clients yet. So we, any sort of accrued revenue, if we go back to those rules earlier, we would be debiting some sort of, um, we would be debiting accounts receivable. And it's already given us the money here, 13090 we would be debiting accounts receivable because we are owed this money. Accounts receivable is an asset. It is increasing, and increases in assets are recorded by debit. So I'm going to um, debit accounts receivable for $13,090. And the other side of this, again, if you're looking at your handout, it tells you that for an accrued revenue, we would debit some sort of revenue account. Well, I think the revenue account that we've been using for services in this chapter is fees earned. So I'm going to credit the revenue account fees earned. We actually are increasing our revenues, and increases in revenues are recorded by credits. All right, going down to the next uh, one on the page, it says the ABC company pays weekly salaries of $5,000 on a Friday for a work week ending on a Friday. What adjustment would be needed at the end of the accounting period, assuming that the accounting period ends on Tuesday? So what they're telling us here is that our year end, or the period, the, the, the date is Tuesday. But the last time we paid anybody was the Friday before. And we have a five-day work week. So it looks like we owe our employees for a few days that we haven't paid them for yet. Most of the time, payroll is always going to involve some type of uh, adjusting entry because not, every, not everybody's paid on the last day of the period that we're trying to account for income in. So what, what amount is needed? Well, first we have to figure out, before we even figure out the adjustment, we have to figure out what is needed. How many days do we owe these employees for that we haven't paid them? The problem says that the pay period ends, we pay them on Friday, and now our year end or our month end that we're trying to close is on a Tuesday. And it's a five-day work week, which means they would have worked Monday and they would have worked Tuesday. So we owe them for two days. And we... Um, our total payroll is $5,000 for the week. So in order to figure out how much we owe them for those two days, we would first calculate a daily rate. And I left this number to be fairly simple um, because 5,000 divided by five is um, $1,000. And then if we multiply that by two, 2,000. So we would need uh, to accrue $2,000. Now is this an accrued revenue? accrued expense or depreciation adjustment. It's kind of funny because I've had a lot of students tell me when it has to do with payroll, it has to be a revenue, but not to the business. Payroll to the business, 
paying our employees is going to be an expense. So if it's an expense, if you go back to my little generic rule, if it's a crude expense, we're going to debit some sort of expense account. What expense would we use with uh, when we're paying weekly salaries? Well, it's probably going to be salary expense, isn't it? And sometimes you may see that in, in some places called wages expense. And those, those two uh, can be used interchangeably. So I'm going to debit salary expense for that $2,000. In other words, that, those two days that I owed those employees for. Again, going back to the generic rule I gave you earlier, um, at, in accrued expense, we're going to debit an expense account and credit some sort of payable account. What kind of payable account would go with salaries expense? It would be salaries payable. We actually try to keep... Um, salaries in a different account from our regular vendors because it is a different it is a different type of payable that we owe our employees employees have to be paid regularly um, on a very periodic and expected date which makes them different a little bit different than our vendors all right you'll notice that the next question here says what amount would be needed if the payroll ended on Tuesday Again, remembering that the, the employees get paid on Friday, and if our, if our period that's ending is on a Thursday, and we have a five-day work week, then we're going to owe them for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, which would be four days. If, we, if the payroll was $5,000 a week that was presented earlier, and then we uh, would get that daily rate of $1,000. We take $1,000 times the four days, which gives us $4,000. So the way that the, the uh, entry would change, if, it, if the period ended on Thursday, would we, we would debit salaries expense for $4,000 and credit salaries payable for $4,000. Okay, in the third scenario here, it says the estimated amount of depreciation on equipment for the current year is $30,000. Okay, and um, what type of adjustment is this? Is it a accrued revenue, accrued expense, or a depreciation adjustment? Well, if you go back and read it, it says the estimated amount of depreciation, so it's pretty obvious it must be a depreciation adjustment. As I mentioned earlier, um, a depreciation adjustment, we would always be debiting the account depreciation expense. No guessing to that. Depreciation is a long word, so because I didn't use this date column earlier because it was not giving me any dates, I went ahead and can start over a little bit sooner so I can get the whole word in here. The problem with lines, sometimes it's hard to stay within them. Okay, depreciation expense would be, they gave us, $30,000. And then we're, um, what account are we going to credit? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we're always going to be crediting accumulated depreciation. In some ways, if the number is given to you, the adjusting entry for depreciation is one of the easiest ones because you will always be debiting depreciation expense and always be crediting accumulated depreciation. Well, I don't really like to introduce a new account to you without telling you what type of account it is and what financial statement it would go on. Of course, expenses are all going to go on the income statement. Accumulated depreciation, as I mentioned earlier, is um, a contra asset account. So it has the opposite balance of an, of an asset account, which makes it a credit balance since assets normally have debit balances. It is going to appear on the balance sheet with the assets. It will appear right next to the fixed asset that, it, uh, that we're depreciating. So in other words, if this was equipment, we'd list our equipment on our balance sheet and then list accumulated depreciation. Then we would show the difference between those two or the net amount. That is also called, would also be referred to as the book value of our equipment. The cost less the accumulated depreciation gives you the book value. And I hope this will help you in working the problems with accrual adjustments.